Hey, hey we're Skillet. Skillet. You are watching our hard drive Ask Anything chat. And we want to say a massive thanks to Lou Brutus for having us on the show to talk about our new album, Dominion. All right, Adam from Newcastle, Indiana. I was at Winter Jam in Indianapolis. Thanks. While you're performing, do you feel God moving in your soul and throughout the audience in your music? Right. We are having um, an awesome Winter Jam tour, right? It's it killer. It's so good, yeah. It's so mm -hmm. killer. It's so great to be back on the road. People are so happy. There really is quite a lot of emotion moving uh, yeah. all through the crowd. You can see it as soon as you come on stage. People are just really excited to be back at concerts and having a great time. Yeah, I think that music is extremely powerful. You know, music is therapeutic. It seems to me that all people, no matter what you believe, what political spectrum or religious spectrum it seems, most everyone agrees that music is therapeutic. Music makes people feel good. Music is, yeah. I think, inherently supernatural. But yes, I would say when we play music, I, I would say, yes, I do experience, um, I think, uh, the power of God moving through the songs. Uh, that's what I believe, and I can see it on people's faces when they're singing the songs back, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, you can see this song means something really great to someone. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're going through, where they come from, or what they believe, but I know this song means something uh, special to them, and that's uh, I think that's one of the most fulfilling things about uh, play, playing in Skillet. Jacob from Flint, Michigan wants to know, how did the Panhead name happen? <laughs> in like Flint, it's my favorite movie. <laughs> um, the Panhead name happened, it was silly. We were on the road all those years ago. I think it was 550 years ago. <laughs> it was a half, half a millennia. Anyway, uh, we were touring and when we first started, we didn't have many fans, but they were hyper loyal, right? Hyper loyal fans, they would bring skillets to the show. And so one time somebody was wearing a skillet, like it was a ball cap, an iron skillet like this, and he had taped it around his, his neck. degrees outside. Oh. It was so hot, yeah. summer festival. And somebody said, whoa, look at that kid. Now that's a real pan head there. And that's how we started calling you guys the pan heads. Best fans. The best mm. fans. The best pans, too. Oh, <laughs> cast iron. <laughs> cast iron. Corey needs a day off. She's getting weird like me. I like it. <laughs> this is from Rebecca from Dunsville, Virginia. Do you see the band retiring anytime soon? Or is there more to come? Answer. There's, there's so much more to give. So. <laughs> I've got a lot of love to give. We're this never, never going to stop. We're never going to stop. Yeah. To the top, to the top, ain't never going to stop. To the That's a skill of song. Go listen. It's called Legendary. Go listen. I don't know. I don't think we're going to retire. 25 years we're celebrating. I hope to be lucky enough to do it for another 25 years as long as you guys are still listening. I'm going to keep playing that rock and roll, baby. Okay. This question is from Alyssa from Radford. Yeah, Radford. Love it's it. so it's rad. Totally rad. <laughs> really, man, I'm from Radford. Uh, do your families have to wait until the album drops, or do they get to hear it as soon as it's complete? <laughs> well, unfortunately or fortunately for our close friends and family, they usually hear the song as it's completed. Like, do you guys like this? Yeah, do you like it? Is it good? Is it not good? What exactly do you like Are the that? vocals loud enough? <laughs> are the vocals terrible? Did you guys listen yet? Why haven't you responded? Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to do about Jen's drumming? <laughs> it's, it's all sorts of like that. And then Seth is like, I don't know. I'm really good on guitar. Yeah. <laughs> the song has a solo. You like my solo? Yeah. <laughs> the solo's not good enough. I gotta, we got to edit it again. Yeah. I got to play it again. Yep. How can we have more solo? We need an outro solo. We need double solo. Do Dominion has an outro solo, yep. which is quite Scorpions of us. Totally. Which I'm a fan. Finally did it. Mm -hmm. you, Hillary, Hillary's actually, she, I think she could be an A&R woman. Because mm -hmm. John's always asking my wife, like, does Hillary like this, this, this? Sometimes she's called the singles before they were singles. She, mm -hmm. she has good ears. She does you can't ears. tell her that she has good ears because then it changes Yeah, it it. changes Then it. people start overthinking. You got to oh, keep yeah. her with her natural instincts because yeah. she has good commercial ears. Yes. <laughs> Do not let her watch this. <laughs> this is from Cassidy from Fulton. Let's see. For John and Corey, as a married couple, what are your favorite qualities about each other? And what is your advice for other couples who are married? Aww. Do you have great yeah. advice? You always have good what advice. What do you appreciate, oh, too? What do I appreciate? Mm, the beard. <laughs> um, the beard, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. It's salty, it's... sweaty smell. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm not putting up with either, oh, one, of these, either one of these people. Uh, passion. You're a very passionate person. 
Which I appreciate. Passionate, stinky beard. Passionate, <laughs> driven, intelligent, deep. Doesn't care what anybody thinks about him. More. What's a word for that? <laughs> secure. Convicted. Secure, but also just like, you know. Strangely too secure. <laughs> <laughs> and super talented, but that's, <clears throat> talent's overrated to me because I'm surrounded by a bunch of people who are super talented. Mm -hmm. Char the character is more important and he's got a lot of character. Well, that's, that's nice. well said. My favorite Corey quality. Corey uh, cares for everybody. Yes, Corey does. is... Um, She's the mom on the bus, so she, she makes sure that everybody has what they need. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever other people tour with us, those other bands find out that Corey is their mom too. She's going to take care of them, <laughs> make sure they have what they need. So that's kind of a great thing. Corey is, I think, probably, I think it's fair to say she's the most caring person in the group. She's mm -hmm. so caring. Certainly a lot more caring than me. I actually don't care at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lead singer. <laughs> They're not meant to care. <laughs> JK. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Tim from Oak Creek, Wisconsin says the song Valley of Death on the new record tugged at the heartstrings for me as it somewhat took me back to my dad's sudden passing in July 2021. He was a com complete mess for months. Is there a backstory or particular event that ultimately inspired the creation of this song? Right. So the song Valley of Death on the new album, yeah, it, it definitely is an emotional song. I think it's very real, very authentic. And I don't want to say there was, in other words, there wasn't like a particular moment. It wasn't a particular death or a particular, you know, in that moment I had this emotion. It was more of the emotion of the last couple of years. I think everybody can relate, literally everybody on the planet can relate to some sort of um, this sentiment that we do not know what's going to happen next week. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow from this pandemic, from the virus, from the economic insecurity that the virus causes, from the lack of one-on-one um, -on -one relationships, seeing your friends or your family face-to-face, -face, grandparents who are dying in hospitals and not allowed to see people. It's just been so difficult. And it, it, so Valley of Death kind of, like I said, it wasn't from a particular loss. It was a feeling of None of us have any idea what the future holds and it makes you take account of your life. Have I been the person I want to be? Am I living the life that I want to live? If I was gone, what would my kids think about me? What would my wife think about me? So it's that feeling of, am I going through this alone? Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a twist in the, in the end of the song. The good news is this. If anybody out there has that feeling, and I'm sure you do, the good news is no, you are not going through this alone. We literally all are going through this at the same time. We feel alone, but we are not alone. So I think there's a twist in the song that brings a lot of hope. Sometimes it's, it brings you hope just to know that you're not the only one experiencing a heartache and, and a particular sorrow. So I hope it encourages people. I'm glad that you relate to it. Next question from Christian from Clifton, Texas. Texas is my favorite state in the union. Okay, here we go. Have Jen and Seth been introduced to Skillet's older material? like pre-comatose and if so what are their opinions these better be good because it's good music it's so good I, oh I, my I, gosh I, it was amazing. <laughs> well what's funny is um when i was about what i don't know 11 years old my brother sent me an alien youth cd from america and i thought it was the coolest thing ever and i used to pretend to be corey and sing her parts in the car on the way to school so it's very surreal full circle for me getting to be a part of skillet these years later give us a taste of one of those ly lyrics that you were singing corey give us will a taste will you be there <laughs> as i grow cold will you be there when i'm falling down oh, corey will yeah. you be there <laughs> 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 Yeah, she's like, yeah. Wailing. It was so That's good. Right there. <laughs> then you had to be able to sing to, to, to make a record. I love it. Seth, you know, you love yeah, the metal. I, I like the early days a lot, but Collide was like the turn when things got a little harder or mm. active rock. Mm -hmm. Remember my mom driving me to school when I was in junior high and my buddy had made me like, a, you know, people used to rip CDs and make compilation mm. CDs. And I remember he put Savior on there. I was like, Love this. That's it. Yeah. So you were stealing so music Savior years was ago. like my first, like, I'm into this. So the main thing I want fans to get from this is our older music was good. <laughs> yeah. And this means that we are a lot older than them, but you didn't think it because we look so young. 
<laughs> Let's move on. Kim from Seattle says, best concert t-shirt you owned growing up. I never had a concert t-shirt. I wasn't allowed to. Anybody else? Come on. If you say skillet. I'm gonna say, I, I, never, went, I never bought t-shirts. I know. I went to Blink 182 show, but I didn't have enough Why money. Why didn't you buy band t-shirts? They're expensive. You didn't have enough money. There's the I best know. thing in the world, going to a concert and it buying is. a band t-shirt. It's true. I, I understand that I'm now. judging my entire band. <laughs> now, here's the deal. Don't judge me. I wanted to go to a concert and buy a t-shirt. My mom wouldn't let me. My parents would disallow me to listen to rock music. What about you? Uh, I, I'm going to go with Michael W. Smith, Big Picture. Yeah. Tour because in my opinion it's his best album. Mm. Okay. But people don't know it. He got a little edgy on that one. Programming is awesome. Big All picture. Right. When I was in college, I bought my own because I could do whatever I wanted. <laughs> and I chose Def Leppard Hysteria. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Nicely nice chosen. Which is also my first record I ever bought with my own money. Oh, yeah. great album. Oh, mm -hmm. One of the best rock albums of all time. Thanks again to our good friend Lou Brutus, also known AKA as Lou Brutus. <laughs> for evidence on Hard Drive, we love coming on Hard Drive and we love Lou. Uh, one of the absolute awesomest interviewers of all time, by the way. Our brand new album is called Dominion. Do me a favor, go listen, and please tell a friend. We gotta get the word out. We will see you guys soon on the road, hopefully.